Welcome in everybody to another edition of the Go 24-7 podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni and joining me uh, once again uh, is Kim Mulkey. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you. Yes. Um, last time we talked on, on a podcast, uh, <laughs> it was the middle of the season. I think it was yeah, somewhere in the middle of the season and we were still kind of uncertain about how it would finish out. Obviously, uh, you end with a great record, make it to the second round of the tournament against Ohio State. But this is all going to be about the offseason now. Coach, what, is, what has it been like for you? How would you kind of recap it um, now that you have your roster pretty much set? The offseason is what it's supposed to be, and you're supposed to kind of re-energize your batteries, and I don't feel like uh, we did that. I, I feel like as soon as the season was over and the final four was done, we continued to work. We continued to bring in uh, transfers and uh, got in the transfer portal to help that freshman class that's so talented that we, we signed to get them some players around them that have experience. And we spent a lot of our April and half of May um, doing that. So uh, it never stops. Recruiting is the lifeblood of all programs and we feel like we've got not just some good players but really some great players and uh, we're excited so you haven't been able to take a vacation yet no actually um when we're done I'm gonna try to go watch Kramer play a little bit in Memphis and um got SEC meetings coming up at the end of the month and um uh then we've got camps coming up in June and uh, yeah, it's it never stops. It's a twelve month twelve month job now. Yep. Um, you kind of mentioned it, adding the transfers that y'all did to um, to kind of round out the roster. I like you mentioned the, the freshman class is um, tremendously talented. Alyssa Williams, uh, Samaya Smith, Flage Johnson. Um, when you and went last year, Poe last year, Poe as well for the junior college uh, ranks. We have uh, local walk on Izzy Bezelman. So yeah, we we're excited about them. Yeah. So when you went to turn your attention to the transfer portal, obviously it's a whole animal of its own. What was your attitude, mentality? What were you looking for uh, when you went to that ranks? <laughs> well, you go to the portal to fill needs on your team. If it's a position need or it's just an experience need, an older player. And I think that was our focus was look at what we have coming back. Who can we legitimately get and what position do they play? And some things unfolded for us that we didn't anticipate uh, in that the talent. Uh, there's a lot of great players out there that um, wanted to come play at LSU. And um, we made sure that we brought them in. They liked what uh, they saw on campus and uh, understood uh, what we have on the floor to play with and, and, and what we're trying to build and do here at LSU. And so we're, we're excited about those that were interested and those that we got. And uh, the, the hard part now is in the fall when they're all here together is getting chemistry and, and getting them all on the same page because they all are talented. Uh, and then we just got to figure out um, how to make them all think alike and, and do the things we want done. Yeah, and I, I want to look at two two players specifically. When we started off, Angel Reese and Ladeja Williams, obviously two two posts you bring in um, to replace the front court, the senior front court that that left. What what do you see from those two? Obviously, Angel Reese coming over as one of the best players on Maryland, a great program over there. Ladeja Williams coming as a graduate student. Um, do you, how confident are you in them, and just what what did you see in them? Well, talent, first of all, you see talent. Uh, they're, they're two totally different style of players, even though they're considered post players. Um, Angel Reese, everybody knows just how talented she is. She's an energizer bunny. She hates to lose. She is very expressive on the floor and um, just a, a kid that um, you just, you're just so excited that, that she's interested in LSU. Uh, Ladeja is a little bit more laid back, uh, bigger frame, uh, played at, a, at Missouri, and you know they shoot a lot of threes, and yet Ladeja started out at South Carolina, and I just think that 
uh, both of those young ladies uh, bring experience first and then certainly the talent. Yeah, and I um, kind of looking at, you know, how you want to play just in a general sense. Obviously, a lot of your career has been having great post players. Last year with the backcourt you had at times, it felt like it was more guard centric. Um, do you feel like um, Angel Reese and Ladeja Williams and then some of the players you bring back kind of allow you to be a little bit more, you know, post centric this year? Well, I think that's a misconception. A lot of people want to say Coach Mulkey's uh, career is always um, around post players. I, I don't know many teams that have won a national championship that don't have good post play. So no coach in America is going to turn down size and athletes at the post. I've been fortunate to have that in the program, but – we are going to have a well-balanced team. Um, people tend to forget the great perimeter players that I've coached that have gone on to have wonderful professional careers. And I ask people when they try to say we're always so post-oriented, and I'll ask them, do you know who holds the record for the number of threes made in a game? It's one of my former players, Juicy Landrum. So uh, great post players make our perimeter players better. I just think coaches sometimes never have the luxury of having great post play. We've been fortunate at Baylor to develop different styles. You have the post players that were the back to the basket type, big body kids. And then we've had multiple athletic face, stretch four type of kids. So our reputation is that we really develop that. Well, we certainly do, but we don't do it at the expense of not having great guard play. Yeah, definitely. Don't go, you know, 40, and know, with just, just good posts uh, for sure. Um, now, when you look at the guards, obviously, I mean, you start with Alexis Morris, last year, Poe, Flo J. Johnson, and then Ryan Payne, returners to me aware. Um, obviously losing Kayla Pointer is, you know, she was kind of the head of snake as far as just ball handling goes and, you know, bringing the ball up the court. Do you feel like maybe whether it be a team effort or how, how do you replace that kind of creation uh, moving forward? Well, you, you never compare players. Kayla Pointer, her career speaks for itself at LSU. And I'm so happy that she finished her career uh, getting to host an NCAA game, getting drafted, um, you know, she became an All-American. She went from being an all-conference player to an All-American. Her progression in one year, we're very proud of. People tend to forget that Alexis Morris, Flage, all those guys can play multiple perimeter positions. They have been point guards on their respective teams. And so what they will do is give you a lot of uh, weapons. If I have to play them together, you do so. I did it this year with uh, the three I had on the perimeter. We weren't huge on the perimeter, but boy, were we lightning quick and could really uh, score from out there. You get them all on campus and um, you, you figure out who needs to be on the floor together, who needs to handle it. It could be they all handle it at some point, but um, we're, we're just uh, excited. Uh, the talent is there. We're in a lot of respects too young, too inexperienced, but then the transfer portal kind of helps you balance that a little bit because they are experienced with uh, high level division one basketball. Yeah, because kind of going off that throughout the kind of end of the season, you were definitely reminding people, hey, we lose, you lose all these seniors here. So we have to be kind of uh, modest in our expectations moving forward with the transfer portal being you know, the weapon that it is opposed to, you know, 10 years ago, if we would have lost this team it would have been very, very difficult to replace that talent. Um, have, have you kind of turned the corner and been like, okay, maybe there aren't as many speed bumps and maybe the wall isn't as tall as you had previously hoped or ex expected. Well, let me also say this about Jasmine Carson and Kateri Poole. That's Those right. are I forgot to mention players. them. Absolutely. We were talking about posts, but uh, those young ladies bring dimension to our, our team. Carson is an unbelievable three-point shooter. Yep. 
And um, she is uh, one that's, that's going to make you have to guard her out there. And then Kateri Poole is just that tough, hard-nosed perimeter player that you better know where she is at all times. She's going to get an offensive board, a uh, strong player. Uh, the portal uh, helps you somewhat do things quicker. But I think of those programs where the portal can hurt you really bad. Yeah. Uh, we now understand the transfer portal is here to stay. And we don't know from year to year if we'll have all of our returning players back. That's just unfortunate for all of us as coaches because you can work a long, long time in, in de develop, developing relationships with recruits and work recruits. And they nowadays, they're not leaving because of playing time. It could be any reason that players are leaving, and um, it helps, and yet it hurts. And you just hope that um, that you do enough good things that it doesn't hurt you too bad. Definitely. Um, yeah, you, you mentioned those guards. I want to go back to Alexis Morris. Obviously, the injury she had late in the year kind of just changed the complexion of the season. I still contend, you know, obviously if this was talent. This had the talent of a Sweet 16 team at the very least. I would have loved to see it against uh, Texas. Uh, but if we just look at Alexis Morris, what have you seen from her coming back from injury and just expect from her next year as being the kind of lone returner? So not only in terms of being able to play, but also being, being able to say, you know, this is, she's one of the key returners and that knows how you, how you do things. I haven't seen uh, her on the floor, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, but we knew with that injury that it was time and you can't rush time. Yeah. It was not going to require surgery um, time. And uh, from all indications uh, from trainers texting me and saying, she's doing great. Um, I don't anticipate there being any um, lingering effects when we start back. Um, and yes, she has to be one on the perimeter that leads and guides us because she knows how I like to run things in practice. And um, she's the most experienced and as is Ryan Payne of yep. uh, the ones that are returning. And um, I expect a healthy and, and uh, good Alexis Marsh. You, you want her to do her last year, exactly like Kayla Pointer and Jalen Sherry and all those seniors did. And I know she wants to as well. Sure. And Ryan, you want that for Ryan. Yep. Uh, you know, it's Ryan's last year and uh, you you want them to stay healthy and, and have good senior years. Yeah, I definitely feel like Ryan is, is you know, capable of taking that step forward at times, just trying, you know, she was thrown in there late when Morris got hurt and it was kind of figuring out, um, where she fit and stuff like that. But I'm excited for, for Ryan Payne as well. Um, I, I guess last question from me here. Obviously, we've seen a lot of coaches that have been doing it for a long time have to adjust to the portal and everything like that. Just how would you describe your mindset and just your competitive edge still, even with the landscape changing the way that it is? Just how, how would you describe where you're at and just how excited you are even still with the changes? Well, you don't want to build your program with just transfers because a lot of them that come in are only here for a year. Yeah. And then you got to go back to the portal. You want to build it with young freshmen. But when you take over a program like we did, there was a big gap between that freshman group and the junior and senior group. And so you needed to fill in in between there, some experience. And that's what I'd like to continue to do. I'd like to continue to recruit freshmen and, and hold on to as many of them as you can as they mature and get better. And then you pick and choose, you know, people out of the portal that will blend in and have great chemistry and do things um, with your team. This year, we, we ended up signing a lot of transfers because there was a lot a big gap there, a, a loss. And I don't think it's fair for any of us to think as good as the freshman class is to throw them out there against uh, Leah Boston or all those great players that'll be seniors in our league next year. But I think if, if you go get some that, that have it played against the best, they can help them in practice every day get better. And yet at the same time, those freshmen have to play. 
and those freshmen are good enough to play, they just need time to really gain their confidence. And like, like with any sport at our, at our level, um, it just takes time and you can't rush time. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm, I'm excited about the team. I think from a depth perspective, y'all have, uh, y'all might have a little bit more depth this year, just going, because I, I mean, we didn't spend a lot of time on on the returners, but Hannah Gusters, Tamiya Ware, and Monty Bart- Bartlett, I think those three can take step forward in their games. Uh, I, I'm sure you would agree I, with that. I would, and I appreciate you mentioning them because the returning players, the Hannah Gusters, the Monty Bartlett, uh, off the top of my head, I'm sure I'm forgetting some somebody, but those guys have got to um, commit in a way now like never before that this is the new me. This is who I want to be remembered as, as a player. And, um, you know, everybody will get comfortable at some time, but you hope that the returning players get really comfortable quicker than the others. For sure. Well, coach, that's all I got for you. I appreciate you coming and joining me. Enjoy uh, your trip up to Memphis to watch Kramer and uh, best of luck to him and uh, enjoy the offseason. Try to take a little bit of a vacation at some point, I hope. I need to do that. Hopefully in August before school starts, I'll head to the beach. Have a good one, buddy. Perfect. Thanks, coach. You're welcome.